So your iPhone is still stuck in a boot loop. <laughs> Let's talk about it. Hi everyone and thanks for checking out my step. This video is going to be a follow up to the video I did a while ago addressing the issue of an iPhone stuck in a boot loop. So if you haven't watched that video and you're watching this video right now, I would suggest that you pause, go watch that video, right click right here to watch it and then you can get back here in case your phone is still acting up. I received so many questions so I decided to make a follow up video. Before I begin I would like to say making videos is not easy. It takes a lot of time. <laughs> so if you find any of my videos very helpful, please like, leave a comment, share and subscribe. It really makes a huge difference. All right, let's get down to business. Now I'm going to answer some of the most common questions that I received. So please watch the video until the end. I think that you will find something that might be helpful to you and that will help you solve this iPhone mystery. I explained in that video, uh, this is a very common issue and I've solved this a couple of times and the methods that I shared in that video are the methods that I typically use. Now sometimes I might have to try a few things but they usually get the job done. Now I did notice a pattern in some of the questions that I received and I believe that some of these problems are caused by some basic things. So before getting into the, any advanced stuff, let's start with the basics. Things that you need to know or things that you need to have uh, in order to solve this problem. So one of the things that I realized that most people struggled with getting the phone into recovery mode. So here I have three phones. I have an iPhone 6s, I have an iPhone 7, and then I have an, an iPhone XS. So in order to get these phones into recovery mode, let's start with an iPhone 6s. If you have an iPhone 6s and lower, it's really easy. All you need to do, in fact, let me give you the quickest method to do it. Just make sure the phone is completely turned off. Just press and hold the home button. While you're holding the home button, make sure you plug your USB cable into the phone and then plug it to plug the cable into your PC while still holding that home button. This is going to trigger the phone to go straight into recovery mode. You don't have to do anything else. Just keep on holding until you see the recovery screen. That is the quickest way for those old version iPhones. Now for iPhone 7, it's a bit different. Press and hold the sleep slash wake button and then the volume down. Now continue holding that sleep wake button plus the volume down button. Even after you see the Apple logo, just continue holding it. Now release, you know, the wake and sleep button plus the volume down once you see that recovery screen. Now if you have an iPhone 8 and any version, that means 8, 10, 10s, even 12, just press and quickly release the volume up button. Press and quickly release the volume down button then press and hold the side button until you see the recovery screen. Now it can be tricky sometimes. You might have to try it a couple of times to get it right. So just be patient and be willing to try again. The second thing you need to do is to make sure that you have an authentic Apple USB lightning cable. I cannot stress how much not having a, an authentic USB can cause a lot of frustrations. iTunes is just going to keep giving you errors. Make sure you have an authentic lightning cable from Apple, the one that came with your phone. So if you're using a third party USB cable, make sure it's really authentic. Um, so one thing I would recommend is try different cables. You can also try different computers, but having an authentic cable is very important. If you're not using an authentic cable, then you're still going to get some errors and things might not actually work for you. The other thing I would recommend is try a different computer. If you're not getting any success with your computer, try a different computer. Whether it's a PC or a Mac, try something different. Also, you can change USB ports. If you're still getting error 9 or error 4013, try a different port. Make sure you avoid USB hubs. Just make sure you connect your phone directly to uh, the USB of, the, of your PC or Mac. 
The other thing you want to make sure is you have the latest version of iTunes. Now, if you're using Windows, as of this recording, this is the latest version of iTunes. Now, in order to update your iTunes, go to your Windows Start menu and type in iTunes. You should see this something like uh, Apple. If you click on this, it's going to open up uh, the Apple, you know, software update, and it's going to check for the new update of iTunes. Now, if there's any new update, you'll be able to see it and you can download and install that app. It's very important to be running the latest version of iTunes. Um, if you're using a Mac and you're running the latest OS, then you don't need iTunes. Instead, you're going to use Finder. Just open up Finder and your iPhone will be located on this side. So you should be able to see it. Now, this Mac I'm using is still running Mac OS Mojave. So if you have Mojave and below, then you will still need iTunes. But if you're running Catalina and above, then you're going to use Finder to locate your iPhone and to restore your iPhone. So what if you try everything I've mentioned so far and you've restored your phone, but you're still experiencing the phone is still rebooting, still stuck in a boot loop. I have experienced this before. After restoring the phone, it, it still came back restarting. So you're going to try again to restore the phone again. But this time around, uh, you're going to locate the firmware files that have been downloaded on your computer so you can delete them, so you can download fresh new firmware. And the way to do that on a Windows machine, you're going to locate those files by searching them. I would recommend that you download a software called Search Everything because with this software, you can search any file on your computer quickly. Uh, if we have to do it manually, it would take us a lot of time to locate where these files are located. So install this application and then search for, just type in IPSW and it's going to bring a bunch of things. Just make sure you look for any file extension that says IPSW open the location where these files are located. Now make sure your IPSWs are in this location and you can double check and see that it's in iTunes folder. Uh, it's, it's an iTunes directory. So what we are going to do is delete these files. Now these files are basically your iOS firmware which has been downloaded previously. Now you might have some or you might not have something in there depending on if you've downloaded any firmware on your computer. If you haven't, then you won't have any. But if you've done it several times, you're going to have multiple files. So what we're going to do here is delete all the files. iTunes is going to be able to download new files and then we're going to try to restore the iPhone using fresh new firmware downloaded. So delete the files and then go back to iTunes. Make sure your phone is into recovery mode and then you can click restore or update depending on which methods you've decided to go with. On a Mac, it's a bit different. To delete these files, just open up um, Finder. So we open up Finder and then click on the Go. Now when you click on Go, what we are looking for is called Library. Now at the moment it's not showing, but if you hold the Option key on your keyboard, you will see that Library appears. So click on Library and then when you go to Library, we are going to look for a folder named iTunes. So if you scroll down, you will see a folder named iTunes. So click on that and then go to software updates. So in this location, you will see firmware files and you can delete them. Now in this case, I don't have any firmware. I haven't downloaded any firmware using this machine. If you have any that you've downloaded previously, make sure you delete them. Now, like I mentioned, if you're using Mac OS, the latest version of Mac OS, things are going to be a bit different because you won't be using iTunes to restore your phone. You're using Finder. So you might actually need to find that file, that IPSW file, uh, the firmware file in a using a different method. Someone asked me what if I'm in the middle of downloading iOS and then the phone exits the recovery mode. Uh, to answer that question, your phone, when your phone is in a recovery mode, it stays there for a certain period of time. At least that's what I've noticed. And uh, if you take a while without doing anything, it's going to exit the recovery mode. So what you can do here is since you're downloading your iOS and as soon as your iOS download is about to complete, get the phone back into recovery mode. So it's, it's not a problem that the phone exits out of the recovery mode. It's just something that happens. So don't feel like something bad is happening. Just 
tr get the phone back into recovery and then restore the phone. Now there's so many things you can do to solve this problem. There's so many things you can try, but I would say make sure you have an authentic cable, uh, make sure you get the phone into recovery mode and make sure you try several times. Now there are third party tools that claim to solve this problem. I personally haven't used any of those tools and I cannot recommend any. If there's any tool that you've used and it has solved this problem, let me know down in a comment. I hope some of these questions that I've answered help you in any way. Um, check out my other video on how to protect yourself using the iOS 14 privacy features. And as always, don't forget to subscribe and I'll catch you in the next one.